Hello, welcome to the first episode of 35 by the Film Initiative and Singapore Community Radio. In this episode, we will be introducing you to the basics of film photography. TFI is an analog photography collective founded in 2017 with an aim to bring film photographers and really anyone who's into analog together. Before we begin, make sure to follow TFI and SCR on Instagram. So this is a roll of film. You've probably seen that artsy friend of yours shoot such a roll with their vintage 35mm camera. Undoubtedly the most common film type, it is found in disposable cameras all over film stores and likely the film shots you've seen on Instagram too. This, also known as 135, could get you up to 40 shots if loaded properly. Though, count your blessings if you even get up to 36 because you just want to make sure you've loaded the film properly and you shoot it well. So moving forward to our next film format. Now here we have what is known as a medium format film or 120 film, which will get you anywhere between 8 to 16 photos per row depending on the camera. As for medium format, it ranges anywhere from shooting frames of 6x45, 1x1 or 6x9. So each variation will use different lengths of 120 film. Less is more and more is less. So here I have with me different brands of 120 film. I have Kodak, Fuji and Cinesteel. The row on the right is an exposed or used row of 120 film. So once you're done using, you know, it comes with a paperback protective sheet. Moving forward, we have even bigger ones in sheets of 4x5. So sheet films like these are single exposure shots and is rather expensive when compared to the previous mediums, likely the film type which requires a certain level of technicality out of the three. So films are basically a sheet of plastic layered with light sensitive chemicals that will capture an image when exposed to light. So you want to try your best to try and protect these rolls and just make sure you don't leave it out in the sun or like pull the lead out. Part 1, the film. So over here we have a 135 film which comes in a can called a canister to protect it from light rays. So all the light sensitive uh, plastic is basically reeled inside this canister. 120 film comes wrapped tight with a paper bag to cover it from light. So instead of the metallic canister, it comes with paper. And now moving forward, we have the 4x5 which uses a magazine so the 4x5 sheet needs to be loaded into this magazine using a duck bag and then from there you are ready to shoot of course more complicated so these here are colored films also called C41 processed films uh, these is how they come packaged in and as you can see it's 35 millimeter and your 120 box now these will produce photos of color evidently when you shoot them and now, moving forward, these here are black and white films that will not capture any colour at all as the name suggests. Here I have variations of 35mm roll and a 120 roll that has already been used up. So now each film as you can see has a number on it ranging from 100 to 3200. That basically is the ISO of the film. The ISO of the film determines how sensitive the film is to light as well as how grainy the photo will be. Generally speaking, if you're shooting in dark situations, a high ISO film will do you better but at the same time, your photos will turn out a tad bit grainier. Lah. That's pretty much the same case for digital photography but we're all about the grains here because more grains means art and yeah, in my hand here I've got a Portra 800. Once you finish a roll of film, you have to develop them with special chemicals at a lab or yourself. After that, you have to get it scanned or printed to see the image. Film when scanned or printed has a great dynamic range. There is a considerable amount of room for error, so if you shot at the wrong settings, most of the time you'll still be able to salvage your photo. To simply put, overexposing films will result in colour shifts, whereas underexposing will result in more green, both of which can sometimes be beautiful. Part 2 The Camera This is an analog camera. You need an analog camera to shoot film. Analog cameras come in many different shapes and sizes, so let's go through the types you'll most likely come across when you're shooting film. This is a point and shoot camera. You've probably seen your favourite celebrity carry it around with them and now you want one too. You know, like Kendall Jenner with a Contax D2. Its compact size is a huge benefit. It'll fit in most bags and sometimes even your pocket, so really just carry it wherever you want. Compact point and shoots are also suitable for those who are just starting out. Not only is it cheap, but it also has auto exposure, so load it up with a roll and you're ready to literally point it and shoot whatever. 
But with many point and shoot film cameras, image quality and general reliability is traded off. But then again, it is convenient to carry and personally for me, it's something that I always have. So I'm always ready to capture moments when I need to. Next, you have your single lens reflex cameras. Single lens reflex cameras has more controls for you to worry about. So most SLRs allow you to adjust your shutter speed, aperture to your liking. SLRs have a light meter built in to determine how much should you set your settings to get a correctly exposed image. Depending on your camera, you would have to either turn the dials yourself to match the light meter or your camera will automatically do it for you. So just double check and ensure using your camera manual that you're doing it right. And primarily what 35s are really great at, for me at least, is that I like to use it to shoot black and white film. And the Leica R4 is a very nice example of a very functional camera and an easy to use SLR with optics that is probably one of the best. But I shoot with it so I might be biased. And mainly, I mean, I would normally use Ilford black and white film on my Leica R4s. So yeah, it's something that you can consider and do experiment with shooting different kinds of film because colour and black and white are different. So here I have a 120 roll. Right now with me is my beloved Hasselblad camera. The Hasselblad camera uses a waist viewfinder and you know, it's really simple. All I have to do is point down and shoot. It works like an SLR. This here, however, is a twin lens reflex camera, which you've probably seen this somewhere in a thrift shop or even on television. It has two lenses. One is for focusing and the other is for capturing. So how to use it is that you look through a waist level viewfinder to focus and frame your photo. TLRs use medium format film. Your photos will appear in a square format. So this is what we call one by one. And since it is medium format, film grains will look finer and the colours will look somewhat better than 135 film. Last but not least, you have the classic rangefinder film camera. With me here is the Leica M6. So rangefinders have the complete functionality of a single lens reflex camera but with less bulk and an iconic design. The size of these cameras make it perfect for street travel and documentary photography. You know, legends like HCB, Gary Wittengren and Nick Ert are prophetic users of rangefinders. And personally for me, I shoot film with a rangefinder. Famous pictures like Muhammad Ali's and the V-Day Kiss were all taken on a rangefinder camera. So as you can see, it's iconic and it's a design that has been proven and tried and tested through time since way back before you were born. When it comes to the price, this is relatively more expensive than the rest. That is partly because of the fact that rangefinders are built with a more complicated mechanism than the rest. Part 3. Loading, Unloading, Film So now that you are familiar with the basics of analog photography, we're going to show you how to load and rewind a film roll properly into a point and shoot and SLR. If you're using a point and shoot, the camera will do most of the advancing and rewinding for you, as you'll see. Loading and rewinding the film are the most important steps in analog photography. So get it right and you'll be happy with your photos, screw it up and you'll waste a roll. So let's start. Firstly, you're going to have to open the back of the camera. On most cameras, the latch can be found on the left part of the camera. The latch can be the rewind knob itself or as a separate latch found at the bottom or side of the camera. So please check out your manual. Make sure there is no film inside the camera before loading. Now put your film inside like this and then you pull the lead all the way to the other end of the camera. Slip it right into that slit right there on the take up wheel. So make sure the sprockets catch on the gear. Okay, so you want to pull the film advance lever just nice. So don't, don't rush because I'm rushing here and you know it's not going as planned, not very professional so just chill. So your film should start to reel around the take up spool. Uh, don't worry if it comes off the first time. All you have to do is repeat the steps from the beginning and start again. Once the film is wound up on the take up reel, close the back of the camera, advance the frame till the counter goes to one to know that you're cor loaded correctly. You should feel a bit of resistance on the advance lever and the rewind knob turns as you pull the advance lever. That is how you know your film is loaded. And once you've done all that, you are ready to shoot. Once you're done shooting, it is time to rewind the film back into the canister. Find the rewind release button on most cameras. You will find this at the bottom part of the camera. 
So that is your rewind knob. And then you got to find a button to let loose or release the mechanism so that you can rewind your film properly. So on the R4, it is below. So turn it around and you see that button. So normally what I would do is that I would press and I would hold it. Now you take the film rewind knob and you keep turning it all the way until you hear a click and feel no more resistance. So you just keep turning and turning and turning and turning and yeah, after that you see, you just don't feel any more resistance, right? And you're free to open up the back. So you open up your camera back and there you go, you take the film out. And now all you have to do is to develop it and remember to never open the back of your analog camera unless you have finished rewinding your film. And that's episode 1 of 35 by TFI and SCR. So don't forget to like and follow us on Instagram and YouTube. On the next episode, we will be talking with creatives who shoot film. Hey guys, my name is Kobe. I am the founder of the Film Initiative. I cannot reiterate how thankful I am for the many opportunities that come. The Film Initiative is constantly looking for individuals to work with and you know we strive to create an environment or a creative group where photographers, not only film photographers but you know generically photographers can come together, share their work and share our love for art. Art gear for the books. So thank you you know if you follow TFI and you do support us and I really appreciate it so do catch our collaboration with Singapore Community Radio because they have been just so incredible and so supportive and reciprocative of what we're doing and you know we're very thankful so really this is just my little thank you note after the recording and yeah if you have any feedback onto what TFI can do should do and you know if you want to volunteer to come and help grow the group uh, reach out to me at kobe.travis I'd uh, be more than happy to speak to you. So, till then, just keep shooting and please, please, please keep film alive.